What is going on out there, lacrosse fans and sports bettors alike? Maybe we're going to make some new lifelong lacrosse fans once you win some money here. The first episode, the debut edition of the Bet on Lacrosse podcast. Man, am I excited. I'm your host, Dan Newbert. You can get me on Twitter at Newbie Talks. And with me, as always, the co host with the most, Doug Greenberg. You can get him on Twitter at Doug Greenberg. Doug, it's been a long time coming. We had to talk about fantasy and the like to get here talking about what we love, the sports betting side of things. Doug, how are you doing, my man? Newbie, I am so good, man. It is Woo! so good to be back. It is great to be talking lacrosse. It's great to be talking betting. And you know what? The con- I think the inverse of what you just said, where we can get some lifelong lacrosse fans from betters, I think we can get the inverse is true, too. I think we can get a lot of lacrosse fans into betting, which – you know, sometimes a questionable decision, but, uh, you know, I think we can get a whole lot of them into betting. It's a wonderful world. It's, you know, for anyone who's not really into betting, you know, what the great Brent Musburger says about it is don't go into this trying to make money. You're going into this because you want to make sports exciting for yourself. If you're smart and you're disciplined, you can make some money, but you know, we're, we're here to just have a good time uh, and maybe not for a long time, but we'll see. I love it how he drops knowledge saying inverse and converse and not the shoes in the opening of the show. But I completely agree. You know, this is highbrow gonna, stuff, man. Yeah, yeah. Always highbrow stuff. And that's the thing. I, I definitely agree. Well, you know, the, the long term goal is for us to make money, but we're going to have fun all along the way. And right at the top here at the Bet on the Cross podcast, I want to remind folks when you are gambling, make sure you're doing it responsibly. But we're going to have some fun here on the first episode of the Bet on the Cross podcast. Also, so behind the board and you'll be hearing from him probably pushing back on some of our hotter takes Hutton Jackson behind the board Hutton you got to be excited too man we're finally here talking lacrosse betting man it's going to be a fun summer I am pumped I'm pumped to have you guys running this show I'm pumped to kind of be behind the scenes and I'm pumped to have you guys pick some winners for me as well hopefully this summer <laughs> well the <laughs> thing is if if only lacrosse was fun and exciting and we had back and forth games to talk about oh, oh wait we're recording this fresh off of the NCAA Division I championship where instant classic doesn't even scratch the surface on what we saw. So we're going to start by uh, just breaking down that game that you were able to bet on college across come playoffs, which was which was just terrific. Following that, we're going to take a look at the PLL futures market. We're also going to go through all five games in week one of the PLL course we'll be sharing what we're looking at on the board and then following wrapping up the episode we're going to debut our extra money opportunity segment and we're also going to get you some best bets so without any further ado let's get right into it with the division one championship that was just everything we could hope for and more it was two powerhouses in maryland and in virginia virginia looking to go back to back maryland looking to stay undefeated and I mean, just runs on runs. It was Maryland running away. Then UVA, the Wahoos putting their stamp on the game. It all ends up with some heart pounding moments, 30 seconds of a game that will live in infamy. What an incredible game. And it shows right there, Doug, why we love this sport, because even when you're out of it, you're never out of it. And what an incredible game that was for lacrosse fans and just sports fans alike. It was remarkable, and I, I'm hoping that some casual fans or even non-lacrosse fans tuned in because that was just a real treat of a game. Um, you know, came down to the last 10 seconds of the game. Just, I, I, you know, Virginia really put in a gutsy, gutsy effort in that game. They dominated in possession most of the game. Um, you know, in a sense, like, you know, they were really dominating in Maryland – you know, all credit to them. They they really made a run at the end. I was I thought the game was over with with five minutes left. I was like, okay, Virginia has had a stranglehold on possession the entire game. Um, Maryland, you know, they they've just got, they got so unlucky. They hit a bunch of posts. Um, I, I who was it? There was somebody had a one handed shot that hit the goalie in the face. That was incredible. And then and then somehow they just strung together a couple goals right at the end and. And that's the beauty of lacrosse is it's never really over until it's over. And th- it was just such a remarkable game. And, um, and from a betting perspective, you know, very, very interesting as well, because Virginia came in as slight dogs. They got a lot of uh, Maryland got a ton of steam late in the game or late, right, right before game time started. And, you know, Virginia came through, um, especially if you grabbed them plus one and a half, that was probably some decent value, but especially if you grabbed them 
um, on the money line. I mean, all power to you. We, you know, we, we, I, I can't say I was among them, but, uh, <laughs> but you know, tough beat. And, and, you know, uh, that's just, it's, it's a, it's a inherently unpredictable game. So that's why we love it. Well, I will say, and I know people don't want to just hear me bragging on the first episode, but when the tournament started, I placed two futures, one of which was on Maryland, one of which was on the Wahoos. So once the game time rolled around, it was all gravy for me. And it's funny because you were talking about, you know, how everything was going over. Well, the game flew over, depending on if you hit it when it opened at 21 and a half was the over under ticked up a little bit because so many people were playing the over. But that thing soared over, almost got doubled up. And just to go back before we get into some of the PLL futures here and get going in to the professional side of things, um, you know, along the way for maybe some folks who are new to betting, we can explain some of these terms that you'll be hearing a lot on the podcast. Doug using one there, referring to a lot of steam. Essentially, what that means was people were looking at which team they thought were going to win the game. And majority of the betting public was betting on Maryland, meaning that they were getting steam, which caused them to be more expensive on the money line. When it opened up, all you had to lay was 125 on the money line for Maryland. By the time the game closed at some shops, it was about 180 that you were laying there. So along the way, we can teach you a little bit about some of those terms as well. Hutton, before we get into these futures, I mean, what an incredible game that championship was. I was trying to get down here so I could get ready for this episode and I couldn't leave my TV because they kept you strapped in even with some four goal, five goal leads. Incredible stuff. What a roller coaster. I mean, you got to give props to Alex Road for standing on his head in cage to finish that game. Um, it looked like Maryland could have tied it off the faceoff, and he ended up coming with a big save that ended up being the game winner. Yeah, back and forth, though, crazy. I mean, I, I lift up, I went out of my chair when Anthony DeMeo scored that long range goal to pull within oh. one. And I saw Nick Ocello's tweet that said, if only, if only it was worth two points like it is in the pros. Obviously, host of pro lacrosse talk here i have to plug a little bit of the pro game because i love it so much but um what a game i mean it it was just phenomenal back and forth you never really felt like maryland was completely out of it even when they started to get desperate towards the end of the fourth quarter you still caught you know caught a glimpse of okay you know they have jared bernhardt they have a high-powered offense they could probably make some stops get back in this game and they did um just unfortunately fell a little too short it seemed like they just ran out of time at the end, but what a game to treat us lacrosse fans after, you know, a year of absence of not having a championship. I think we were, we were treated to a phenomenal one. No, I, I couldn't agree more with either of you guys right there, which is just incredible that we go from off the heels of what an incredible championship run that was for UVA and what an incredible championship culmination it was. And a week after we get to roll right into the PLL lacrosse season. And that's what we'll do right here. Why don't we start by taking a look at what has happened thus far? Because as far as, you know, about, or as soon as about, you know, two, three, probably probably a little bit over a month ago, you've been able to bet on the PLL futures and what it looks like right now, really not much has changed outside of maybe some plus prices changing. I think the biggest thing that stands out to me guys is when all these lines open on the PLL futures, you could get the cannons at, Plus 2,000. I I mean, that's got to be a fun ticket to get on early. I wasn't as confident to pull on that. It went down below 900, and now it's up just about at uh, plus 1,000. So, you know, the thing is, when I'm betting futures, Doug, I like there to be a juicy payout. Like, sure, I would love to go on the whip snakes to three-peat, but I'm not going to do it at plus 160. And with the archers, sure, I think they have a lot of great pieces. They have one of the best one-two punches in the league in Schreiber and Amon that, you know, I'll get to in just a little bit here. But uh, at plus 450, I don't know if their price or the Redwoods is enough to get money out of my pocket at those prices. But I'm just wondering for you, like when you look at futures, how do you bet them? And was there anything that you saw on the PLL side of things that really kind of got you uh, interested, maybe worth a look? Yeah, it's this one. This one's tricky because – you know, the, another, this is another great Brent Musburgerism. <laughs> you know, it's all about picking the winners. You, you're just trying to cash tickets. That's, that's what you're going for at the end of the day. And even with, with futures, you know, futures, you're going with some value here and just the way that things are set up in this league, the way that this team in particular has constructed themselves. It's so hard to pick against whip snakes. Like it really, really is because, you know, they're two, they're the back-to-back champions. And frankly, they did not get, a whole lot worse, if at all, this offseason, even with, you know, um, 
a an expansion draft. It's so hard to pick against whip snakes. That said, um, if you grabbed that cannons at 20 to one, just through like literally just a couple of bucks on that, you know, that's a great bet just for the vet, just from a value perspective. And, and then from there, um, you know, we can see some of the teams that have caught some of the steam as we were talking about earlier. Um, archers obviously have moved up a little bit from 500 to 450. You know, uh, I think if you, I, I personally love archers this year. I think that the way that they're constructed, um, they, they did a really nice job in the off season. Um, I think getting Connor fields was, was such a great move for them. Um, that offense is going to be super high powered. Um, so I, I like them a lot. And then another team that's very interesting, that's caught a lot of the steam uh, in the futures market is water dogs. Water dogs opened up at nine to one and now we're seven to one. And, and honestly, it's another team that's made a lot of great moves in the off season. Um, they already had some decent pieces there, uh, you know, despite being an expansion team last year. But if you're really looking for some value down the board, um, you know, you, it might be a little bit too late to, um, too, too late from the cannons. Cause they've, you know, their value has been cut in half, yep. but water dogs just moving down, uh, you know, uh, two orders of magnitude or whatever you want to call it. I, I think there's still a decent bet at seven to one. Um, if that's one you're looking at here, but again, it's, it's just so difficult to bet against whip snakes right now. They're, they're, they're so dominant. And until we see them not be dominant, it's just, it's just very difficult to pick against them. Yeah, and I think, too, you know, in between water dogs going up and then going down, they, they went all the way up as high plus 1,100. So so you just see how fluid these kind of future markets are and why, really, you just kind of have to keep going back and checking them because sometimes you'll just see this incredible plus price that's just a little bit too juicy, so to speak, to be able to turn up. But I'll be the first to drop the hot takes, guys, even at plus 450. Well, I hate having the book holding on to my money for just, you know, a 4.5 to one payout. Um, that's going to be my pick to win it this year. I, I think that they were right there. You know, one goal loss to the whip snakes last year in the semis. And I'll get to this a little bit later, but the real part that they were missing was something at the stripe was at that face off X. And, you know, they definitely answered that with the player that we talked a lot about on the fantasy lacrosse podcast in TD Erland. So I'll be the first one to throw out a hot take here on the Bet on Lacrosse podcast. Give me the Redwoods plus 450 to win the championship. And uh, if that continues to trend that way, I'm going to get more and more annoying as the year goes on, Doug. I don't hate that pick at all, um, you know, because they, you know, like you said, they've been right there. They were in the they were in the finals two years ago. They were in the semifinals, you know, got very close to winning in the semifinals last year. Um, it's not a bad play and they're, and they are one of the most talented teams in the league. No question. And, you know, like you just mentioned, they filled in one of their only weaknesses, uh, which was at the face-off stripe with, you know, arguably the best face-off guy in college lacrosse this past year, probably not even arguably, um, TD, TD Erland dude is amazing. Um, I, I definitely like that play a lot, but if you're, but again, what we keep talking about with line movement as well, you might be able to get some better value on Redwoods. It just depends how you think like the first week or two is going to go. You know, Redwoods is one of the only teams maybe, no, Redwoods and Cannons are both playing two games, right, in the in the first week. So if you think that Redwoods is going to lose one, maybe both of those games, mm -hmm. then maybe you wait, see if Redwoods, their line gets a little, uh, gets a little longer, and then you grab it because then you get a little bit better value on that pick. But I definitely see what you're saying, um, but it'll depend kind of just how you think they're going to do in the early goings. Um, but it's it's definitely a really nice pick in terms see? of some value. That's why we have Dougie Fresh, Doug Greenberg on the pod here. Analysis, you can only hear from that guy right there. So I don't really have much, guys, on the player future side of things. You know, I'm all about value when you're betting futures. I kind of alluded to it there. I hate having the book hold on to my money for a whole entire season because then that's not money I can be using if you're managing your bankroll correctly to be betting on some of these teams in season. So as far as, you know, the MVP futures, they have top goal scores, two-point scores. You can really find some fun bets for season long. Just the way and my betting strategy, I really don't de delve much into the future market unless I have a real strong feeling. So either Doug, Hutton, any strong feelings on the MVP winner or some of these other player prop futures before we get into the action coming this Friday in PLL as week one rolls around? Yeah. So, I mean, just looking at it right now, um, it, it's, it's the, the MVP ones. It's really just so hard to say, obviously, you know, we think Lyle, Lyle's the favorite mm -hmm. rightfully. So 
And then you got Rambo, uh, the MVP from two years ago, I believe Zed. I mean, obviously it was weird because of the, because of the bubble tournament. Yeah. Zed is the rain, Zed's the reigning MVP there. And interestingly, he's only at 10 to one right now. So the idea is that maybe he won't be able to keep it up over an entire full season. I don't know, man. Zed's really, really good. Um, I wouldn't be surprised to see him in the top goal scorer conversation as well. He's the second favorite there at plus 250. Um, the one, the one value play that I definitely liked looking at this is, um, the two point scorer, right? So there's two, the two favorites at the top. We got Sergio Perkovic and Mike Chanichuk, yeah. plus 175 plus 325 respectively. Makes sense. They've been two, two of the, you know, probably the two best two pointer guys in the league, uh, up to this point. However, there is one rookie coming in this year and there was a tweet from our guy, Joe Keegan, which I can't find for whatever reason, but what, but, we, but I know I saw it um, where he, he was at practice with, he was at practice and he saw Mac O'Keefe has got some serious range. Apparently yeah. um, he was one of the deadliest scorers in college lacrosse and he's tied for the third best odds, but those odds are at 12 to one um, compared to where Perk and Chani are at. And, and that's really, really interesting to me because I think the only reason he's at 12 to one is because he's an unknown commodity. And, and sometimes you can make some serious dough on that. Um, you know, guys who you just, who you don't know, like, and that, and that's another one too. I don't think we have rookie of the year odds or anything like that, but um, rookie, like in, in other sports, being able to like spot something in a rookie of the year campaign, for example, in the NHL, I didn't end up taking this and I'll be kicking myself for the rest of my life about this. Kirill Kaprizov from the Minnesota wild, you could find a serious edge on that dude. He was like the fourth or fifth best odds for rookie of the year in the NHL. And there were so many indications that he was easily going to win it this year. It hasn't been announced, but he's pretty much a lock for it at this point um, because he was a dominant player in the KHL. And, and so he's had that experience. And so if you can spot an edge with a guy like Mac O'Keefe, who was one of the best scorers in the history of college lacrosse and you know, we're getting a lot of early indications that he's got some range and we don't know exactly what he can do from two pointers at this point, because there is no two point line in college across. So I, I love Mac O'Keefe at 12 to one for, for most two point goals. Um, I think it's a really, really good value play. And especially if you don't want to go with a known commodity like Perkovic or Chan and Chuck, um, that's, that's the only player future. I really feel a little strongly about. I'll probably end up throwing something in on that before, uh, before the fu- before the the fun gets underway, so that's the only thing I'm looking at. Now, full disclosure, I record from Pennsylvania, a little bit outside of Philadelphia. They do have a saying about Mac O'Keefe there at Happy Valley at Penn State, and it is uh, simply, "He's good." <laughs> yeah, it, it's it's always a good look, and it's fun when you're rolling with O'Keefe. Before we get into uh, some of these games this week, I know Hutton. When we were talking our little pre-show meeting, it sounded like you had some thoughts at least on this future market for some of these players any thoughts behind the board there brother yeah I love you know the idea of Mac O'Keefe you know having a chance obviously you know we've seen him shoot from two-point range in college despite it only counting for one so he's more than capable um I also like cursed as well you know he's at plus 2000 um is another opportunity again he's going up against Mike Chanichuk on his team so he it might be tough for him you know to get all those opportunities as well but um especially with Mac O'Keefe being probably going to be running out of the box a lot because of that attack. I mean, the chaos, the thing with the chaos, they don't really play attack and middies. It's more lefty offensive guys, righty offensive guys. So I think there's going to be a lot of opportunities for him. So I really like that in general with the player futures. I think it's just tough because the odds are so stacked against you. And it's almost like, you know, the two obvious picks would be Lyle Thompson, Matt Rambo and Tom Schreiber, but they're the, you know, the least value you could get. And then everything else is kind of a risk, especially too, when you're looking at teams where, you know, you could look at, uh, if you think a cannon could potentially win MVP, well, you got to remember, like, it's probably going to be Lyle Thompson if there's anybody. Um, and that's kind of how I feel with a lot of the teams. And again, the MVP thing is it's tough. You know, I mean, Zach Curry is another guy who could be on the water dogs, be MVP caliber player, but it, you know, there's, it's just hard. It's hard to pick these player futures, man. See, that's why we pull him in. Even if he wants to hide behind the board and just produce the show, we're going to have to keep getting Hutton takes because they're so strong, just like that. So folks, we know you came for the meat and potatoes, believe it or not this week, the PLL already starts Friday night. We will be talking about professional lacrosse being back and we'll be talking about us 
betting on it. So I'm going to turn it over to Hutton and he'll uh, break down or at least uh, send us into the games we'll be breaking down. We'll be giving you our thoughts on the totals, some spread plays as well. And uh, you'll want to stick around to the end of the episode when we give you our best bets and our extra money opportunities. But Hutton, take it away, my man. Yes. Yeah, so you have Redwoods Cannons starting it off 7 p.m. on Friday night. Redwoods are a one and a half point favorites. And the over under on that is 22 and a half goals. On Saturday, you're getting the chaos and the whip snakes. The whip snakes are two and a half point favorites. Obviously they are the reigning champs and they beat the chaos en route to their second championship last year. So that's going to be a matchup, a rematch from last year's championship. Uh, later that night, Atlas play archers, new look Atlas team. Uh, archers are open up as one and a point, one and a half point favorites against the Atlas and then the following day on Sunday, you have Cannons playing their second game against the Water Dogs. Water Dogs are one and a half point favorites. The over under for that is 21 and a half. And then Redwoods playing the Chrome for the final game of the weekend. That one's a little bit higher over under. The over under is 24 and a half. So that might be a good game to look at into um, potentially, you know, if you're looking to play the over under the totals. Um, and the Redwoods are one and a half point favorites again in that game. Yeah, excellent stuff there. And that's the thing, you know, you, you run down right there and you notice the highest total that you're looking at is Atlas and Archers. A lot of respect for both of those offenses. Probably the um, Archers in that case, maybe just a little bit more with Jeff T still having that major question mark over when we'll actually get to see him, if at all, on the field this year. 25 and a half, as, as uh, Hutton mentioned there. The lowest we're looking at in the total market is the Cannons and the Water Dogs, which is uh, 21 and a half. And that under is even juiced a little bit more. You have to pay a little bit more to play the under at minus 134. All the games basically lined like you would see a baseball line or a hockey line, that one and a half, they call it the run line or the puck line. Um, but then you have the one game that stands out to me with the chaos and the whip snakes at plus two and a half. So we'll go game by game here and I'll let you bat lead off for us as we look at the Redwoods minus one and a half point favorites over the cannons to kick off the PLL season. Anything you're looking at here, Dougie? Yeah. I mean, it, it's such a great game to open it up. Uh, I completely understand why the PLL wanted to lead off with this game because Redwoods is kind of that, you know, the perennial bridesmaid, um, as we were talking about one of those teams that's they're always just right there, but they can't ever quite get past whip snakes. Um, you don't necessarily want to open the season with whip snakes though. That's, you know, that's something that the NFL, the NFL does every year. I think it actually would have been kind of cool, but I understand not wanting to do whip snakes in the first game of the year against cannon seems to set cannons up for failure immediately. Um, so I like this idea of doing cannons against Redwoods. As we were saying, like cannons are just such a, they're, they're a completely unknown commodity right now. Obviously there's some things to love with them. There are some things to, you know, be a little concerned about. Um, but what, but like we were saying, uh, Redwoods are really, are, are just, they're, they're such a good quality team. And I, I just can't see them, you know, dropping a game right off the bat to an expansion team, even if that team has Lyle Thompson on it. Um, you know, if I'm looking at the spread, uh, the, the minus one and a half year actually looks really, really nice for cannons, uh, or sorry for Redwoods. Um, you're, you're getting even money for that as opposed to the money line where you'd have to be laying minus 167. I wouldn't feel great about that. Um, seems like a lot to lay for, you know, like we said, a little bit of an unknown commodity, but if you did want to get involved in this game, I think there's a decent shot that Redwoods, you know, come out really strong, especially, if, you know, TD Erlin is as good as advertised, but, you know, great game to open up in Boston with the cannon or in Foxborough, I guess, with the, with the cannons um, back home there. But I'm definitely liking Red, Redwoods on the spread here, minus one and a half. Now, uh, Hutton, any feel on this game? And then uh, I'll kind of wrap it up before we move on into the next one. Uh, do you have a pick against the spread in this one, Hutton? I do. I'm, I'm with Doug on this one. I, I like the Redwoods, you know, to cover the one and a half minus one and a half, because uh, I just think cannons, there's just too many questions. Again, they have Lyle Thompson. They're always going to have a shot, but the face off stripe is kind of mm. a question mark for me. Again, we have, we're led to believe TD will be their starting face off guy for the Redwoods and he'll be going up against either Simino or Kelly or a combination of the two. And both those guys had, uh, you know, Kelly had a rough season last year and Simino was kind of in a, a two face-off system. So, you know, those guys I think might struggle a little bit against TD and just with this high powered Redwoods offense, um, you know, led by Rob Pinnell. Now, I, I just think it's too much to ask for the cannons to cover that spread. 
Well, you know what? We'll get our first disagreement. I will yes. uh, book you guys on this one. I'm going to take the cannons plus one and a half. And again, folks, when we're making our picks against the spread, unless we're really explicitly saying, you know, this is something I would be betting or this is something that I really like. Um, this is obviously just for, uh, you know, some breakdown, some analysis on the game. I completely agree with everything you guys are saying that the cannons are a massive question mark. I mean, the talent is indisputable. If you look at the roster, except as Hutton eloquently put there at the faceoff stripe, I have some major concerns for this team for, uh, for, for both lines. You know, they have two guys that they're kind of going to be interchanging and hopefully one guy's able to seize the role, but they'll have one heck of a tough test to start it off, but they get to do it in Gillette. You know, they get to do it with all this excitement. And sure, the cool thing about the PLL is they travel from city to city. But I have friends up in that area that are so excited that they're going to get to see the cannons in the PLL. I think there's going to be a lot of excitement around them. We've also seen in the past couple seasons um, that the Redwoods, they can have a tendency to start a little bit slow and really come on late. Now, I'm not saying that will happen, but in week one, opening night, who doesn't want to have a fun time? I'm going to take the cannons plus one and a half in this one. And I'm going with my first dog. A lot of my looks uh, as we, as we roll down here, guys are going to be looking towards the dog just because in week one, I just think there's such question marks. Like, like, honestly, there's not many games that I'll be betting with my own money in week one, because I just kind of want to sit back. I want to see how some of these teams look, some of the chemistry, and then come week two, week three is where I'm going to really start ramping up and really expending my bankroll. But you know, why not play on the dog in week or in, in the first game of the season, have a little fun. And then you and I can all, uh, you know, be talking shit back and forth as the games are going on. It'll be a fun time. Yeah, man. And, and honestly, I completely agree with you there. Um, you know, the last time we saw PLL, they were in the bubble. It was a very unique environment. They were playing lots of games in a short period of time. Um, and now we've got an expansion. We got an expansion team. We have a new league merging in here. There's there's just so many question marks. And I think, you know, I, I'm, I'm going to bet probably on one or two things here mm -hmm. in, the, in week one, but I'm not going to go completely crazy with it. Um, I'm just going to use this week to evaluate how everything goes. And then from there, we'll, we'll kind of see, you know, I think week two, we'll have a better feel of like what this is actually going to look like. Um, but yeah, it's a good point. You don't want to go too crazy right off the bat. And, and you know, especially you don't want to blow all your money right off the yep. bat. Uh, don't want to destroy that bankroll. Um, so, you know, definitely something to, to keep in mind with this first week of games. We can evaluate it all we want, but really, you know, we might be completely wrong. Would not be surprised if for some of these games we are totally wrong and we we're totally off base. Like we didn't, there's just nothing we didn't, we, you can't take everything into account. So um, definitely something to pay attention to. My biggest advice for you prospective bettors is even your best bet, even the most confident lock you've ever seen is going to lose 50% of the time. Don't be crazy. Don't be pulling off the rubber band and betting with money that you can't lose because even your most confident play is going to lose folks. It's just going to happen. There's a reason why those lights are always on at these sports books. That's, that's the exact reason there. So let's keep on moving here as we got the chaos and the whip snakes kicking off Saturday. Going to be one heck of a game, the rematch we've all been waiting for and the whip snakes getting the most favoritism on the spread, which comes as no surprise as we kind of alluded to there, but both lines, both ways, minus 113, but you're looking at two and a half goal favorites are the whip snakes over the chaos. My best bet actually comes in this game. So I'm going to hold off. You guys are going to have to stick around for old newbie talks take on this one, but Doug two and a half point favorites with an over under of 22 and a half five o'clock on Saturday on the Eastern side of things. What are you thinking, brother? You know what? If whip snakes, if this was like whip snakes against Atlas, or it was against I don't know Water Dogs maybe, or Chrome, or some or a team or a team like that, or Cannons, obviously, I would understand the two and a half point line. Um, that would make a little more sense to me. But against Chaos, who they played against in the championship game, granted they beat them by more than two and a half in the championship game, but I just don't think that's enough of a reason to to make this a two and a half point line. Um, you know, I, I think that, and I mean, another reason I could see why the bookmakers would think about this too, is that, you know, chaos were God awful at the beginning of the season uh, in the bubble. And really, when you look back on it, that was more of Andy Towers um, trying to get low seating um, for the top. For, and, you know, and that's the thing with Andy Towers is he's Smart just, guy. he's always going to be doing something a little tricksy. Uh, he, he's always got something up his sleeve. 
Um, and I don't know. I don't think that chaos want to, to really get embarrassed by whip snakes again. Uh, it's, I don't know. Something feels really weird about that. Like I, I get it. Like the books are, and this is another one of those betting axioms is that the books know what they're doing. You know, they're, they're trying to entice people with this bet. And I don't know though, something just feels so wrong about this. And, and granted, you know, betting in lacrosse is, is really new to the books as well. So maybe they're trying to feel out what works and what doesn't. I don't know. I, I, I don't think chaos is, you know, poor enough to justify this line. They've still got so much talent. I'm a big fan of Josh Byrne. Um, I, I think Josh Byrne's going to come out smoking in this one. Um, you know, they've improved in the midfield, you know, I, I, if I had to go with anything and again, I'm not, th- I don't think I'm going to bet in this game in particular, but chaos plus two and a half uh, is definitely something I'm looking for. No, I think fair look right there. And honestly, I, a full disclosure, I love head coach Andy Towers. He's like the best brand of Stone Cold Steve Austin. It's like exactly what lacrosse needs. Uh, Hutton, any thoughts that you have as the chaos are taking on the whip snakes and uh, Doug's looking towards the underdog in this one? Yeah, I mean, I probably wouldn't touch this with a 10-foot pole. If you had to <laughs> hold my feet to the fire, I'd probably go whips still, you know, to cover. Really? Um, but you got to look at both these teams, you know, have undergone some changes. Last year, the chaos essentially beat them for three quarters and couldn't put it together in the fourth quarter. Um, I, I like Doug's bet just because the fact that you're now having Max Adler, which was the face-off position, was such a struggle for the chaos last year, being their, you know, presumed face-off man. And he trains with Nardella all the time. They're both members of the face-off factory. I think it's going to be a battle at the stripe between those two. So that's why I think there's just so much unpredictability. You could see the chaos cover and beat them pretty soundly that you could see the chaos lose and still cover. You could see the whips running away with it. It's, I just wouldn't touch it. Um, so I tend to, I tend to like where Doug's head is at just because, you know, they are given two and a half points there. Uh, but again, I wouldn't touch this game if it was up to me. <laughs> see, and that's, that's smart. You know, like this is a great teaching point for some folks who are new to betting, who are new to lacrosse. You know, if you don't have a strong feeling, just because a game's on TV doesn't mean you have to have action on it, folks. And I, I think that's one of the best lessons you can have as a better. You know, maybe if you have something that you kind of like, but you don't love, make a little note, write it down, see what would have happened. And sure, maybe you'll be kicking yourself, but maybe by the end of the week, you'll be thanking yourself passing on some of maybe these more subpar opportunities. We'll move on here to 745 Eastern on Saturday evening when the Atlas take on the Archers. Archers are a minus one and a half point favorite. We're looking at an over 25 and a half over under Atlas are underdogs on the money line plus 145. You got to lay 186 to play on the Archers here. I know Doug from talking, he has a best bet look in this one. So we'll hold on to Dougie Fresh's thoughts and all bat lead off here before I throw it back your way, Hutton. Uh, this is one of the rare looks I have towards the favorite. I- I'm taking the Archers minus one and a half in this game. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm really excited for the Atlas. When those futures came out, I wanted to rush to put it on the hook them horns, whatever their, their, their slogan's going to be. I love the logo. I love how they have the whole vibe there. Um, I'm really excited for the Atlas. However, I'm a little less excited when you have the giant question mark over Jeff T, who I was so pumped up when he went first overall. I think people have forgotten what a terrific player that this guy is because Cornell wasn't in action in this past NCAA season. It worries me a little bit, and they still have plenty of talent. Don't get me wrong. Well, on the other sideline, I mentioned it in the show open. You have one of the best one-two punches in lacrosse in Tom Schreiber and Grant Amon that has all kinds of chemistry. I think probably a little bit easier for them to get up to speed with the continuity that they already have on that Archer's sideline because, guys, for all of these games and why I'm saying hold off a little bit here in week one, they've only been together for a week. doesn't matter if they played two seasons, you know, if they're going into their third season, if they're a rookie – They've only gotten to camp a week ago at Gillette Stadium. So I think in a lot of these, and, you know, I I kind of um, speak out of turn when you'll get to my best bet, though. I I think a lot of these teams that already have established continuity, they have a better chance week one at at maybe pulling away, maybe making this a little bit tougher, which is why I look at the Archers minus one and a half in this game. What say you, Hutton? I tend to agree. And, you know, looking on the other side of the field, uh, the Archers revamped that defense Mm. and now features Graham Hasek, as well as Warren Jeffrey, you know, two physical presences at the defense side of the ball. And then you also have Jared Connors they're adding at LSM, who we just saw in this UVA championship. So 
Um, you know, I, I think they're going to be a tough test for the Atlas. I think the Atlas have a lot of talent on offense coming in that wasn't there last year and their defense is going to be a little bit better too, but too much, too little time to kind of gel. And so I tend to agree with you with the fact that I, I like the archers as one and a half point favorites here. So we'll get Doug's take a little bit later when we get to our best bet segment, which brings us folks to Sunday. Can't believe we're already talking about the last two games of the weekend, but we have plenty of fun coming this season, folks, as on Sunday, first game that we're looking at is the Cannons back in action again and staying as dogs on the spread. One and a half point underdogs to the Water Dogs, who are one and a half point favorites. We're looking at a 21 and a half over under and Water Dogs also favorites on the spread while they are on the money line while there's no plus money to be had on the money line as we look at our odds here we're recording on a monday these again folks may be moving at some point during the week so you want to get to them as quickly as you can when you hear our episode drop but 121 on the money line to the 106 both of them laying money on the money line i'm staying away from both of those opportunities because of that but uh, dougie we haven't heard from you in a while brother i'll let you bat lead off here as the dogs are not dogs against the cannons your thoughts brother dogs are not dogs that's a pretty line good. pretty good that's a, anytime the water dogs are favorite this year that's uh that's <laughs> something we're gonna have to pull up on. yes sir. um you know i it, again I don't think I'm going to put any real money on any games involving the cannons this week, Mm -hmm. just because we really don't know what we're working with, with them. It's an entirely new team. And obviously they're going up against the other expansion team from last year, but we have a little bit better idea of how that team's going to function a little bit. Um, You know, I'm really excited about the kind of moves that water dogs made in the off season. I think they're much improved. Um, You know, I, I definitely, uh, I, I really like what they've got going on. And I think that, you know, again, if I had to do anything for this game, I'm always going to pick against an expansion uh, against the newer expansion team, you know, pardon me there. Um, so I'd, I'd probably be looking at water dogs minus one and a half, but realistically, if I'm going to take it, um, it would probably be on the, the money line minus 121 for the water dogs. Um, you know, I'm willing, that's, I, I'm willing to lay, lay usually up to about 150. That's me personally. You got to, you know, do what's most comfortable for you. Um, and a 121, that's very reasonable for me. So I, I think just to not have to sweat out that extra point, um, having them win by two, I'd rather just take water dogs minus 121. Yeah, I, I think you make a lot of great points. And this is one that I'm not playing as well. If I had to, I would go with the water dogs minus one and a half for one reason and one reason only. What helped me decide where I was kind of going on my picks against the spread here was some of these prices that you have to lay. That That's one of the things when they, when they line it as if it was a run line or puck line, you can get just some insane juice that you have to lay, some insane money that you have to lay to be playing something on the spread, which is the point of, betting on the spread is so you can get away from some of that heavy money line juice. So you put in a perfect opportunity where it's the exact opposite because sure. Do I think the cannons can cover and win this game outright? Yeah, but I'm not going to lay minus two thirty to do it now for what it's worth. You know, the water dogs as Doug alluded to, they came on late in their last year and their first year in the PLL. And they kind of know what the cannons are, are kind of going to be going through this season as being the new kid on the block, you know, the, the new expansion team cannons have to get up to speed rather quickly. I, I don't love this one either way, but that plus plus one seventy five on the water dogs to cover that spread would make me feel a little bit better about it. If I did hold my nose and bet it, which I don't think I'm going to any strong opinion or feels in this game Hutton before we get to our last game of the spread or the, of the, uh, of the board this this weekend no i tend to agree with you i, I do like the plus 175 because i do think the water dogs will win and i think it will be you know more than two or three goals i, I think um just I, again i'm not too high on the cannons right off the bat yeah. and i love what the water dogs did this off season i'm looking a little bit more too though at the totals i think 21 and a half um is is kind of teasing you to try to take that over i, I would take that over in this game just because i think you know, Jake Withers did really well at the stripe last year, but he also had Simino with him. I think this face-off battle might be a little bit more up in the air compared to, you know, comparatively to what the Cans are going to face on Friday night. So I think you could see a lot of possession changes and hence a lot of scoring in this game. So I, I would take the over probably on this. Um, you're getting it at plus 105 as well. So um, that's probably where I would look. I would maybe avoid picking a, a you know, a, a favorite in this, but maybe go towards the, the total. Beautiful stuff there. And final game, 
faces off 345 on Sunday afternoon. And then week one is done already. It's the Redwoods taking on the Chrome and the Roll Woods are minus one and a half point favorites over the Chrome. You're looking at a 24 and a half over under and uh, money line. Very similar. Actually, the exact same money line that we just talked about. The favorite minus 121 and the Chrome, the underdog at minus 106. Um, I'll bat lead off on this one, guys. Uh, I, I'm high on the woods. I mean, you heard it at the top of the, the episode. I was Mr. Hot Take starting off the episode, which is which is how we want to do it here. I was also and am also very high on the Chrome's defense, which I think clearly was a focus for them when you look at their roster and their draft, especially. And both of these teams have pretty darn good defenses, major focus on that. So I'm looking at the under in this one with a little bit higher of a total at 24 and a half. That's probably my, my favorite play out of this one. But I also, and I'm going to talk about it a little bit later as well, I can't justify, you know, laying minus 245 for the Chrome to cover one and a half. I mean, that's that's absurd to me. I, I would get that a little bit more if it was like a two and a half. Okay, lay that juice. It makes a little bit more sense. But I can't talk myself into that, which turns me to the woods at minus one and a half. I could see, you know, this kind of battle at the stripe being one of the funnest ones of the weekend with Farrell and TD Erlin. I can't wait for this game to tip off or, you know, face off, so to speak. But with the uh, woods – getting that plus 185 if you play them on the spread that's the only look outside of the over which i may be betting with my own money or the under which i may be betting with my own money what say you doug yeah so this one's really interesting to me because just going off of um where the spreads are at and where the you know where the odds are at for this game this is actually the tightest game of the of the of the week um, you know, cause you look at that minus one and a half, um, spread line or, you know, goal line, whatever you want to call it. Um, that's plus one eighty five for the Redwoods. That's the most, that's the longest odds you're going to get all day, um, or all weekend. And so this is the tightest line. And this is one of those lines where I look at it. It's what you might call a rat line in betting where, you know, Redwoods are supposedly a much more superior team. Um, Chrome, you know, have not had ample success in their first two years in PLL. And yet this is the tightest line that we're seeing all weekend. And that makes me think, okay, Vegas, or well, you know, the books in this case, I don't know how involved Vegas is in this, but whatever it is, the, the books are looking at this and being like, okay, we know that people are going to love Redwoods. You know, we know that they're, uh, they're, they're a, fa- a favorite for the championship. We know that Chrome has not had as much success. So let's make them favorites to acknowledge that they are the favorites in this game. However, we're going to give people a good chance with them on this money to entice them to bet on them. And and a lot of novice bettors will look at this and be like, oh my God, Redwoods, like getting plus 185 on that, on that spread line. You're getting minus 121 on the money line. That's unbelievable. I need to take them. And, and I don't know. I mean, Chrome has, has really improved this off season. Um, they've always been a really good team that just couldn't really figure it out. Um, I, you know, I really, really enjoyed what they have here. There was someone, there was, they did a really nice job in the draft. Mm-hmm. Um, if I'm not mistaken, obviously picking up Randy Stotts in the entry draft was really, really good for them. Um, you know, I think getting JT Giles Harris, the obviously arguably the best defenseman in the draft, um, Ryan Tarafenko, they have completely revamped that defense. Um, so I'm going to have to go ahead and disagree with you. I would take Chrome, but like you mentioned, I can't possibly take them plus one and a half minus 245. So I'd be looking at them on the money line here, minus 106. I, it's one of those plays that I actually really, really like. It's not my best bet, but I do really like it a lot. Uh, Chrome minus 106. I love it. And Hutton, you're going to get the last word here before we step aside, give folks our best bet and our EMO extra money opportunities what do you think of our breakdown there of our final game of week one? I tend to agree, uh, you know, kind of with Doug. I, I like the Chrome in this game, but again, I'm not, I'm not going to do plus two, four, five. Uh, it just yeah. doesn't make sense for me to put that much money um, towards it to try to make a little bit. So um, yeah, I would probably just do the money line and pick Chrome. Cause I, I do think I'm pretty high on the Chrome. I thought they had a really good season trending upward last year as well. They just kind of ran to a hot chaos team out of nowhere um last year they beat the redwoods by one so again that's like a, again a really tough game for me to even touch 
Um, so if I had to pick, I'd probably go Chrome money line, but again, probably staying a large distance away from this game. Man. So folks, when I fade the Redwoods earlier with the cannons, I get disagreement. When I roll with the woods here, I get disagreement. I can't win with these two guys. We're going to step aside. We're going to hear from our sponsors. When we get back, it's money making time. We're going to be giving you our best bets and our extra money opportunities. Don't go anywhere, folks. Thank you for listening to Bet on Lacrosse on the Lacrosse Playground Podcast Network. Bet on Lacrosse is hosted on the podcast platform Anchor, and Anchor gives you everything you need to produce your own podcast. And the best part, it's free. They allow you to easily record and edit your podcast. And after it's published, they send it out to all the major networks like Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and many more. They also connect you directly with advertisers so you can start making money from your podcast right away. If you're thinking about starting a podcast today, download the Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Welcome on back to the maiden voyage, folks. We're almost out of time here on Bet on Lacrosse episode one. I'm your host, Dan Newbert at Newbie Talks with me, the co-host with the most, Doug Greenberg. Get him on Twitter at Doug Greenberg. This is where everybody has been waiting for. It's best bet time, and let's get into it. Oh, yeah. Oh, Tina. Tina Turner kicking off the segment. It's all about the production value here, folks. We got to keep you around for a reason. Best bet time. Doug, the floor is yours, my man. All right, man. I'm going with Archers minus one and a half against Atlas. Um, You know, Atlas made some nice moves in the offseason. I'm, I'm still not completely convinced by them. I think... If there is such a thing as rebuilding in PLL, I think Atlas is probably the closest thing to that. Um, whereas Archers, I think, are in win now mode. I, I think they're really trying to prove that they're up there, especially, you know, having Tom Schreiber, one of the best players in the league. I, I think they're out here with something to prove this week um, against an Atlas team, which I'm just not completely convinced by. Um, you know, I'm, I'm not crazy about laying one and a half, but I think in this game, it's about as best, as good a bet as you can find. Um, so I am looking at, for my best bet, Archers minus one and a half, minus 113. What say you, newbie? I say you're simply the best, Doug. That's what I say. My best bet is Chaos plus two and a half, minus 113. I hear these guys groaning already. Uh, Chaos, they've spent all year, folks, thinking about that run that they had only to come up short against the Whip Snakes. You don't think that adds a little bit of an edge to a team? I know it adds an edge to their head coach, Andy Towers, a.k.a. Mr. Stone Cold Steve Austin. He doesn't need any help getting juiced up. And now he's going to look on DraftKings before the game, and he's going to see these people think we're a two-and-a-half-point underdog. We're the biggest underdog. There's going to be plenty of juice in that locker room. And, yeah, whip snakes are favorites for a reason. But I don't see how this chaos team is getting two-and-a-half, and that's not worth a look. Hey, if you want to get real frisky, might even be worth a look on the money line if they could get it done. I'm not going that crazy. Maybe a little sprinkle. Maybe sprinkle, a little yeah, sprinkle. Baby. But give me, sprinkle. The, give me the chaos plus two and a half, minus 113. It's my best bet. And if this one hits, I'm going to put out a video of me doing the stone cold Steve Austin on Twitter for people to enjoy. Best bet, newbie, chaos plus two and a half. There we go. Oh, I need that one to hit now. <laughs> for the stone, for the stone cold Steve Austin, for, for the, the for, for the for little the, bump, for the content, for thing ever. It's for all the content. Ab- it's all about the content. Hashtag for the content. I'll be final, rooting for that. Final segment before we get you out of here, folks. It's time for something we call the EMO. We're going man up. We're trying to score. We're trying to get you some of that extra money opportunity. And all bad lead off here. Because, again, I'm going to disagree with the boys. It's what will make the show fun. My EMO, my extra money opportunity is the Redwoods. And that juicy plus 185, them on the spread minus one and a half. I said it earlier, the Redwoods are solid top to bottom. What was the one piece they were missing was at that stripe. Second to last in the league last year, 36% on faceoffs. Horrible. So what did they do? They went out and got the guy who could potentially be one of the best guys from the stripe in professional lacrosse. It's TD Erland. Now he has quite the test getting off the ground and getting acclimated in game two for the Redwoods against Farrell. 
but as great as I think he will be, it should be a huge payoff for the Woods and hopefully the same for us. My EMO this week, Doug, is Redwoods minus one and a half and that juicy 185 for my first EMO of the season. What say you, brother? All right, man. My EMO is Water Dogs minus one and a half plus 175. Uh, as we talked about in the in, in this section with this game, I love a Water Dogs have done this offseason. I think they've really they really addressed a lot of their weaknesses. And I think they're going to be coming out hot. They want to prove that they're not the rookies anymore uh, in this league. And they have a chance against the current rookies uh, in the cannons who are still going to be trying to figure things out. Water dogs, you know, struggled a little bit at the beginning of last season. And I think now that they've had an entire season under their belt um, and they're getting, you know, getting the chance at the fresh meat. uh, I think this is a really, really great spot for them. I could see them, you know, wanting to make a statement in this game. Um, So I'm looking at water dogs minus one and a half. At plus 175, not quite the plus 185 that you had, but still very solid for some plus money right there. Hey, as long as it's plus money, it makes our extra money opportunity segment. So to recap, I'm on the woods, minus one and a half, plus 185, Dougie Fresh, Water Dogs, minus one and a half, and that juicy plus 175. That's our EMOs, folks. That is a wrap for us, and we want to remind folks that starting next week, We're going to debut that wager woes segment, hopefully not on either of our best bets, but we'll get to that and cross that bridge if we have to. And that's what we'll be recapping the most unfortunate bad bets of the weekend. Also starting up, we're going to have our money line hotline bling up and running so that you can call in and give some uh, maybe betting advice that you want to give to the listeners, or you can also just call and vent about your wager woes. Just visit the link that's in the description. And of course, Check out everything we're doing at lacrosseplayground.com. If you want some more betting content beyond lacrosse, you can also check out the man, the myth, the legend, Dougie Fresh's betting newsletter. It's called The Rundown. Follow him on Twitter at Doug Greenberg. Keep your eyes peeled for my betting preview coming later this week as well. And as always, folks, smash that subscribe button. Share this pod with your fellow betting friends, fellow lacrosse fans, and join us every week as we bet on lacrosse. And let's make some money. For Dougie Fresh, Doug Greenberg, I'm Dan Newbert at Newbie Talks. And for our producer as well, Hutton Jackson. Find him at Hutton Jackson. We'll talk to you next week. Let's make some money, folks. Mm-hmm.